About 70% of Earth's surface is ocean, so it's pretty easy to think that whatever happens in the atmosphere is also going to affect what's happening in the ocean. For example, you probably heard that the increasing carbon dioxide concentration in the atmosphere is causing a global warming. But that's not all. It's actually also causing ocean acidification. My friend Sam Dupont is one of the researchers trying to figure out what this means for life in the oceans. Okay, so ocean acidification is the, de the increase in acidity in the ocean due to the uptake of the carbon dioxide from the atmosphere. So as you know, we produce a lot of CO2 by, by you know, the fact that we are more and more on the planet or that we need energy. And one of the services that the ocean is providing to us is absorbing part of the CO2. So that's actually limiting the impact on the climate, like global warming and so on. But on the other hand, it's making the ocean more acidic. To measure how acidic or basic a solution is, we use a pH scale. Drinking water has pH 7, which is neutral. Seawater normally has a pH around 8, which is slightly basic. Part of the gases in the air will always dissolve in the water, and when carbon dioxide dissolves in water, we get carbonic acid. With more carbon dioxide in the atmosphere, we will also have more carbon dioxide dissolving in the water, and therefore more carbonic acid forming. The result is a lower pH in the ocean. Sam demonstrates this by blowing into a straw in seawater. We expect the pH to decrease by 0.4 pH unit, meaning that the other water will be two times more acidic than it is today. So, how does this affect the plants and the animals that live in the ocean? Well, that is exactly what these scientists are studying. All right, so we're getting ready to head out to one of the locations where Sam and his colleagues are uh, doing their sampling to come back to the station and do the experiments. For this experiment, we brought with us plastic holders with small glass discs. And what we're going to do is we're going to lower them into the water and then over time they will uh, build up a uh, little community of microorganisms that are floating in the water and then they use these organisms to do the experiments. Oh, it's so heavy. <laughs> so the discs that we're taking out of the water now have been out here for nine days and they have been accumulating uh, organisms from the water and it may not look like there's a whole lot of stuff growing on them but there's actually a lot more than you think. In this experiment, we're studying how small microalgae, the base of many food chains in the ocean, are affected by the acidification in combination with many pollutants that are also found in the water. Instead of studying just a single species, the researchers are interested in studying the effects of the whole community of algae. They also do experiments on different marine animals. So when we started to study ocean acidification, the problem was how do we control the pH in the water? And that's not as easy as it sounds, so we, we tried different methods and at the end we are using this system. In this experiment they use 15 large bottles of seawater. The water in the bottles have different pH, which is controlled by adding carbon dioxide gas. The experiment is set up to investigate how mussel larvae at different stages of development are affected by the different pH levels. Every day water is collected to check the juvenile mussels. A more acidic environment seems to make it harder for mussels and other animals to get energy. But some species don't seem to have this problem. Jellyfish, for example, have been found to get energy more easily in a lower pH environment. Jellyfish, not exactly what we want more of when we're going swimming. So it's always the same problem. It's like you need more energy to cope with ocean acidification. If you can get more energy, it's a good thing. If you can't, it's a bad thing. So that's why you have winners. That's why you have losers. Here's the deal. Ocean acidification is something we know is happening already today. Uh, so the research around this is really important to understand what the effects are going to be, what organisms are affected, and of course, what we can do to slow down the ocean acidification process. So I'm really curious to hear your thoughts around this. So please put your comments in the comment box below and see you next time. This video was shot together with the University of Gothenburg as a part of a larger project about the ocean. And remember, we're always looking for new partners, so if you do have a project that you think we could collaborate on, feel free to contact us, send us an email, or contact us through our Facebook page. And subscribe to the channel so we can continue making these videos. Alright, thanks.